with the cars ready to go out for the second race this weekend in the BRSCC and Mazda MX-5 Super Series. Brian Charlotte starts on pole position, but the conditions out there this morning are going to be very tricky. Wet track, but the sun is out, so it's going to dry very quickly. Who knows what setup these guys are going to be using today. It's going to be interesting to see what happens, particularly if Brian and Matt Pickford's battle continues from yesterday. It's over to our commentary team to take you through all of the action. Yeah, thanks, Lloyd. Well, that was a fascinating battle yesterday, and with this now added uh, element of changing weather thrown into the mix, it could be even more entertaining today. Uh, the grid then based on the results from yesterday's race, so it's Chandler and Pickford row one, Costins and Marshall Burke row two, then Collins, Powell, Fleet and Crook. On the fourth row, Declan Lee and Darren Kell share the fifth row, ahead of Simon Hutchings and George Grant. Adam Rowlandson and David O'Reilly are next, then Russ Lindsay and Javier Brook, whilst Jim Hart, Liz Walton and Cameron Thompson round out the field. Cameron Thompson being uh, a new addition then in that number five car uh, for the second race of the weekend. So ready then to go racing once again here on a damp Silverstone International circuit. What's going to happen? Who will come out on top in these slippery conditions? Who's got the best setup? Who's got the best confidence in the wet? Well, let's find out. 20 minutes of racing get underway. Good start made by Chandler again from the outside of row one. And James Costins is away well once again in that blue car. Going to the outside of Chandler for the race lead into the first quarter. Surely that won't work. The grip is on the outside, but he has to settle in line in second place. That means that he's got himself ahead of yesterday's runner-up, Matt Pickford, already, who is busy fending everybody else off in third position. Costins alongside Chandler for the lead into the breaking zone at Village. He still can't quite go around the outside. Pickford's got third. Then Marshall Burke's forward. George Grant into a spin through the right-hander. Contact presumably from somebody behind. Didn't quite catch who, but he's left. Well, not pointing the wrong way, but stationary and possibly with a stalled engine. On board with the race leader, they're looking back at James Cossins, who showed potential for race-winning pace yesterday, and now this morning is looking to try and deliver on that. He's almost pushing Chandler down the hangar straight. But James Cossins, with significantly less experience than Brian Chandler, is he going to be able to use the wet conditions to his advantage to find a way past? Well, we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. There's Joe Marshall Burks. He's got Clive Powell's up the inside, the sideways. Patrick Collins in front of him, and that might allow Powell's past the pair of them. How did that one settle out? This is for third place, and no, fourth place, I think I'm right in saying. And it's Marshall Burks, I think. Hard to see, isn't it, with the low sunlight this morning uh, glinting off the wet circuit. But yeah, Marshall Burks has got fourth, Powell's fifth, and then Collins, and then James Cossins, is that not? So what's happened to James? Because that's the number 24 car, I think. No, it's Simon Fleet, excuse me. It's the other pale blue car. Simon Fleet is where he should be. James Cossins is also where he should be, which is towards the sharp end and getting away from the rest of the pack now, those top two. Pickford third, then Marshall Burks, Powell's, Collins, Fleet. The rest all streaming through behind. <laughs> to the braking zone they go then, and the difficulty in the wet is that the traditional overtaking line, i.e. the inside line into the corner, is not where the grip is, and the traditional racing line is not where the grip is either. You have to run around the outside of the track through those corners, particularly the tight corners, in order to find any traction. But uh, that risks leaving the door wide open for the car behind you to just launch up the inside. So it's a balancing act, but um, the quicker way around the circuit is definitely not the traditional racing line. It's where we may see a little bit of overtaking once we get into the, the middle of this race. For now, though, people are still trying to find their feet as they grow accustomed to these conditions, which are very different to what we had yesterday. It was a dry qualifying session too, so uh, this is the first wet running they've had. On board with Patrick Collins then in fifth position as he tries to find a way back ahead of Clyde Powell's. Sorry, sixth position, excuse me, ahead of Clyde Powell's in front. What threw me is that Matt Pickford is the car now in front of Powell's, but Pickford was third, but he's now fourth because Joe Marshall Burks has got himself back onto the podium. So Chandler and Costins are the top two, getting away from Marshall Burks third, Pickford fourth, then Powell's fifth, Collins sixth, Fleet seventh, eighth is uh, Jeremy Crook by the looks of it. And then light position, Javier Brook, yeah, number 70 comes through with Declan Lee, the number 11, rounding out the top 10. And that's the battle in front of us now, the Bora Motorsport car of Javier Brook in front. And then Darren Kell, the one on the outside of the top 10 looking in, the orange number three car trying to 
in his way. Back up the order. Oh, and there's contact with Declan Lee. And the pair of them both go around. Well, Darren Kell immediately tried to do something about getting into the top 10. And sadly, it didn't work. Here's the replay from on board with Declan Lee. We won't see much here, I don't think, until the contact is made. He goes to the outside line. Then this is what I'm easy. That's where the grip is. But you're leaving the door invitingly open for the car behind to come through. Or try to, at least. And arm, an arm goes up in the air in exasperation there from Declan Lee, who finds himself nerfed out of a promising position there, just inside the top 10. Now, neither of them are in the top 10 after that contact. There's the number 84 of Adam Rowlandson going through the corner, which he spun yesterday, but thankfully getting it right this time. Keeps the car pointing in vaguely the right direction. Not always the easiest thing to do, actually, because of the slippery conditions, but it's, uh, of course, this is a relatively new surface as well. Silverstone, the entirety of the Silverstone circuit was resurfaced once again over the summer, precisely because the old surface, or the old new surface, uh, was... Um, struggling with water retention. Um, but uh, so it seems to have drained well so far this morning, but of course a moist circuit is a slippery one. But, uh, I think one or two drivers are just being a bit more circumspect this morning maybe than they were in yesterday's race. Simon Fleet though looks like he's about to go on the attack here to try and get past Patrick Collins. Two blue cars together with Jeremy Crook shadowing them at the moment. He's actually going better today than he did in yesterday's race marginally in that he finished eighth yesterday, so his position isn't much better, but he is a little bit closer to the pace of those directly in front of him, rather than being stuck in no man's land as he was yesterday, really. And into the braking zone at Village, four different cars, four different lines being taken on the way in. Some lines are quicker than others, but on the way out, it tends to balance itself back out again. And it looks as though Powell's was the big winner there. He's got away from these three through that uh, sequence of corners. And now Collins, Fleet and Crook left to battle amongst themselves behind him. A bit straight they go, then Patrick Collins. It's green wipers on, not because it's raining, but because there's a huge amount of spray being thrown upon his windshield. As he makes his way now down to Stowe Corner, very fast part of the circuit here. Onto the brakes as gently as you dare, but you still need to get the car stopped, of course, but heavy braking will risk locking up and going straight on. Gently feeding the wheel through. You can see how tentative they have to be with all of their actions, both feet and hands, to make sure that the car doesn't suddenly skate off the road in these treacherous conditions. Through Village, uh, sorry, through uh, Vale they go, into Club. Collins, a little bit sideways, right up to that painted kerb, and that's so, so risky. One wheel on those, on those kerbs, and you're likely to find yourself spinning because they are like ice in the wet, but they have to run right up to them because that is where the grippy line is. And that's why it's such a challenging set of conditions to drive in these. First corner they go again, and no change in the order for now. Fleet still stuck behind Patrick Collins, but feeling the heat, so to speak, from Jeremy Crook. Defensive line taken by Collins into Village. This is where he seemed to maybe struggle a little bit a lap ago because he was going in on that tight line to defend the position, but sacrificing mid-corner grip as a result. This time there's a slightly better job of it, certainly under immediate threat of losing the place as they go out onto the hangar straight once again. Is Marshall Burke's third, Matt Pickford a lonely fourth this time, so it doesn't look like he's got quite the pace in the wet that he had in the drive. And you look at the time that he's lost to Brian Chandler, with whom he was battling through most of that first race yesterday. Shows that he's not able to live with him this morning. This is still the best battle on track, really, between Collins, Fleet, and Crook. And I hesitate to include Clyde Powell's in this battle because it looks like he's getting away from him slightly and this will help him because they're going to go side by side behind and Simon Fleet goes to the inside of Patrick Collins, that was a nice move but he hasn't got it done yet, there's a right hander coming up now, he has the outside line which in the dry would be a bad thing, in the wet though it gives him great traction off the corner and he is able to complete the manoeuvre so Simon Fleet goes ahead of Patrick Collins now just try and regroup and not lose his rhythm, not lose his momentum here, try and get back after him Otherwise, he may end up losing a place to Jeremy Crook, potentially. Then the next pair, Javier Brook and Adam Richardson, come through. And uh, Rollins, in this case, we come through. Simon Fleet isn't actually done yet. Look at the way that he's immediately caught Clive Powell's. So, um, really good pace in this little part of the race from Simon Fleet. And not only is he overtaking people, but he 
looks quicker than the cars around him, so he may be able to gain a few more spots before the end. He needs to get past Powell's as quickly as he can, though, because there is a bit of uh, clear air in front of him to the, the next group on board with Collins, who has a grandstand view of this now. Head down the hangar straight. Does Fleet get enough of a run here to have a go? Does he want to go to the inside, though? I don't think he has much choice. He's not really close enough at the moment, so has to stay in line. Simon finding some good traction then in these slippery conditions. Now can he pull off a similar move? He's had another good exit from Stowe Corner. He knows that there is some grip on the inside line into the next breaking zone, but he's just a car length or so too far back. I think he looks to the inside to try and uh, distract Powell's more than anything else. So it doesn't work. So he is forced to stare at the rear tail lights of the number 15 car for one more corner. Oof. Adam Rowlandson completely out of shape. That's how slippery those curbs are. A bit wide onto them coming through the middle part of the club and that uh, sent him for a slide. Just quite a bit of momentum onto the pit straight. And, uh, he limits his options then for overtaking through the next sequence of corners. So the fleet now having another go now at Clive Powell's. There's a gap on the inside line here into Village Corner. Is he brave enough on the brakes though? Well, it wasn't really a case of bravery, more a case of trying to avoid having an accident. And I think uh, had he committed to that move, an accident was certainly on the cards. He's bunching them all back together again now though. Collins and uh, Crook are certainly not dropping away from them. There's Jeremy Crook then, the number 77 car. down there towards the right hander of Stowe, Pickford there, the yellow car coming through. He really is in no man's land in this race, isn't he? Uh, he's uh, not been able to go after the leading three, but equally seems to have enough pace to keep this marauding pack several seconds at bay. To the braking zone at Vale, and Simon Fleet this time does not look to the inside, instead focusing on taking that. You see there the wide line they take into, into the left hander, to try and find some grip. Is that going to help him through club? Not demonstrably, really. And Powell's has the measure of Simon Fleet for the time being. It's going to take a little bit of working out on Simon's part, this move. I think he is a bit quicker than Powell's, but to overtake, you have to go off that ideal line. And in the dry, that's always the case, of course, but it's even more of a challenge in these slippery conditions. As soon as you go off the grippy line, you have very little grip at all. Again, that's a look to the inside of the village, but the gap was covered. It's also a trade-off between attack and defence, because Fleet knows that if he does lose momentum by going onto the wrong line, trying to find a way past Powell's, then he will likely lose at least one position to Collins, and maybe two to Crook, so this is a, a tricky situation for Fleet to find himself in, underneath the bridge. Slipstream starts to take effect again, although it seems to have slightly less effect in the wet for some reason. He's had a good run though, looks to the inside of Powell's in Stowe Corner, and Simon Fleet, is he going to commit to it? I think he has to now, but the grip is going to be with Powell's on the outside, and Clive is able to get through to the inside. Both a bit sideways on the exit, but that was the first real attempt from Fleet to find a way past. Meanwhile, Declan Lee on his uh, recovery drive, after the contact he had with Darren Kell early on, has now arrived onto the tail of... Russ Lindsay this is. I think maybe George Grant up in front. Stone corner. To the brakes into Vale, looks to the inside and Declan has been quite a bit quicker than the drivers he's racing with now all weekend so realistically this is in theory not going to be the hardest job in the world for him to gain this lost ground but so that's not necessarily um, proving to be completely the case. He's certainly taking a, a bit of time to get back up the order, but the tail enders had spread themselves out quite a bit in the early stages, so that's certainly not helping his cause. There you can see George Grant, he is the next target. Declan Lee picking them off, but uh, work to be done, I think, if he's going to get anywhere near the top ten. Back with the midfield, the cars are yet in the midfield, towards the middle of the top ten as well, and uh, Matt Pickford getting away even further from them now, but Powell's certainly not escaping from Simon Fleet. For my money, Fleet definitely has the potential to make this move sticky. just needs to pick the right line. I'm not convinced the inside line at Stoke Corner is the place he wants to be, though, so maybe 
trying around the outside, get that run down into Vale. That's what he's tried this time. Gets a better exit than Powell's. Goes to the right-hand side of the road. That will become the outside for Vale. Again, that's not necessarily a bad place to be. On the brakes he goes, but the risk is that he's leaving the door open. Look for the cars behind, and Patrick Collins has a little nibble up the inside. But Fleet has the better run out of the left-hander. A slide for Powell's coming through the first part of club. And now might this allow uh, Simon uh, Fleet to have a go into Abbey Corner, an even bigger slide from Patrick Collins coming out of club. And that will certainly give hope to Jeremy Crook that he might be able to gain a position here or two maybe before the end of the race. But in the end, they arrive at the first corner in the same order in which they left the final corner. But Fleet is trying to do something about that. He's looking this way and that, but Clive Powell's is finding it reasonably easy to defend for the time being. Line taken by Fleet. Does that give him a good enough exit out of village to maybe have a go into the right hander at Chapel? The answer appears to be no. So still Powell's hangs on. It's this hard fought fifth position. Clive started sixth, so he's gained one position, which was at the expense of uh, Patrick Collins, of course. So we're on board with now. He's also lost a place to Simon Fleet in the early stages. Collins now actually has arguably the best toe here and might be able to get to the inside of Fleet. He's going to the inside into Stowe Corner and this is a really, really good opportunity to move back ahead here for Patrick Collins. He's late on the brakes. He turns through Stowe Corner. You can see the car sliding around on that, in theory, slippier inside line. But he runs out to the edge of the road on the exit telling us that he has completed the manoeuvre. So Patrick Collins back into sixth position now. And Simon Fleet will not be particularly happy about that. He just drifts a bit wide and uh, that won't help his speed now through club could that allow Jeremy Crook to get alongside it almost does but uh, I don't think he'll be able to go through on the inside at club and indeed that turns out to be the case so interesting stuff there it was a case in point there wasn't it the cyber fleet so uh, intent was he on getting past Clyde Powell's that in the end, maybe the mistake came from him and he ended up leaving the door open for Collins and Collins was the big beneficiary there so sometimes use other people's situations to your advantage. Collins himself though was sideways that time through Farm Curve. Around the outside looks Jeremy Crook. They're all starting to get a bit desperate now into the late stages. Declan Lee meanwhile has caught um, now the number 69 of George Grant. So Declan Lee looking to try and gain one more spot. Goes to the inside towards Village. Grant leaves the door well open but he's just trying to find that grip on the outside. He went a bit too wide that time though. As I said, it's a balancing act. You want to go wide to find the grip, but you can't just pull over and let all the drivers through. And uh, that's what Grant was doing there, unfortunately, in going that wide into Village Corner. So another place picked up then from the recovering Declan Lee. This quartet of drivers makes their way through Stoke Corner again. Still in the order in which they were in last time we saw them. Howells has a couple of car lengths advantage over very defensive Patrick Collins gets through Vale and Club and Crook this time is the one I think that's got the better exit can he get up the inside no not into that second part of the right hander and it's so tricky isn't it you get the run you go to the inside to execute the move and there's just no grip there and you end up going backwards rather than forward, which is very frustrating. Adam Rowlandson, though, having a look at the inside, a big look at the inside of uh, Javier Crook into Abbey Corner. Oh, that was really brave. That inside line definitely wasn't yielding much grip. And uh, Javier is able to maintain the position as a result. Into the closing stages now, though, only a couple of laps to go. And you sense that something still is going to change in this group. I don't think they're going to get to the flag in this order. They just haven't quite decided what order they'll be in. Very wide line from Collins. You can see there, through the middle part of the corner, he was slow, but then he rockets himself out onto the hangar straight, just that little bit quicker than the tighter line from Simon Fleet allowed him to pull off the corner. And he will then pick up the toe of Collins and continue, in theory, to catch um, the 15 car in front. Jim Hart, meanwhile, about to go a lap down in the uh, 27 car. So, like that presents an opportunity, maybe, because that means that. Clive Powell's in front of this group will have to go off the ideal line in order to make that move work. Brian Chandler, meanwhile, on the final, or maybe not the final lap of the race, he might be able to squeeze one more in, but he's getting towards the end of the race. The BC uh, Cars driver with uh, an even bigger margin this time around than he enjoyed in race one. He's got away from James Costins to the tune of about four and a half seconds. And uh, Costins, in turn, is about eight seconds ahead of Joe Marshall Burks in third. 
who's a phenomenal 20 seconds ahead of Pat Pickford in fourth. So the top four really have had fairly calm and quiet and uneventful races. There you can see the gap between the top two. Still impressed by James Cossons in this race though. Third in race one, second in race two, and that, oh, is Hutchins. That's uh, number 37, Simon Hutchins, that's got around through the final corner. See whether that was contact induced or whether it was self inflicted, but uh, either way, that will cost him positions because he was only just in front of the um, Darren Kell and Declan Lee pair. So he'll lose at least two places, maybe another one to David O'Reilly. So, yeah, James Costin is impressing me this weekend. Second, uh, third in race one, second in race two, and he'll be aiming for the top step of the podium in race three. There's no doubt about that. Ryan Chandler looks as though he's about to take a double race victory, I think, this weekend. He comes across the start finish line and on to the final lap of the race now. So just 1.85 miles separate Brian Chandler from another victory, second victory of the year at, uh, sorry, of the day, excuse me, on the weekend, I should say, at uh, Silverstone, having qualified on pole for race one, led that one all the way, despite the pressure coming from behind from Matt Pickford, and he looks as though he's gonna do the same in race two now by an even more comfortable margin over the impressive James Costins in second, and Marshall Burks, who has been a little off the pace, it must be said. Off the podium in race one, he's on the podium in race two, but some way off the lead, that gap between first and third is likely to be about 12 or 13 seconds by the flag. So, Joe Marshall Burks, who we've seen a regular front row this year, just struggling a little bit, maybe particularly in the wet conditions today. But, uh, race one, he was about 13 seconds off the lead, so actually, his pace compared to Chandler, pretty equal across the two races. But anyway, uh, Chandler heads down into Vale for the final time, and hits the brakes, turns through the left-hander under absolutely no pressure on this occasion. Chandler looks as though he's going to come through victorious at the end of the second race of the weekend here at Silverstone. He won in the dry yesterday from pole. Today, he wins from pole position in the very damp and greasy conditions, but it is still a win for Brian Chandler, with James Cossins coming home in second position. Some way back in the end, 4.14 seconds was the margin of victory at the flag. Very, very solid drive there from Cossins nonetheless. Marshall Burks comes home third. Eventually, he's 8.8 .8 seconds further back. <coughs> with Matt Pickford due shortly in fourth position, although I say shortly, he was about 20 odd seconds behind. The next car's back marker. And then eventually Pickford will come home in fourth. There's confirmation of the result then. Chandler, Cossons, Marshall, Burks, Pickford and Collins, the top five. Clyde Powell, sixth. Simon Fleet, seventh. Jeremy Crook, eighth. Javier Brook, ninth. And Adam Rollins to round out the top ten. Darren Keller and Declan Lear, 11th and 12th respectively, ahead of David O'Reilly, George Grant and Simon Hutchings. Russ Lindsay, Cameron Thompson were 16th and 17th. Brian, congratulations, second win this weekend, it was good fun. Yeah, it was tricky that one, um, the boys in the garage set the car up awesomely, um, I didn't really know what to do with it because this place is really, really grippy in the wet as we found out Friday, um, so yeah, we didn't want to go proper wet but didn't want to go dry, so I think they went somewhere in between and, and it obviously worked, so yeah, well done boys back at the workshop. Yeah, it looked, looked good, it looked like the car was, was handling well. This afternoon, we're hearing reports it might be a little bit wetter. What are your thoughts? Try and wobble around quicker than everybody else again, really. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the weather's going to do myself, so um, we shall see in a few hours' time. OK, well, congratulations on your win. We look forward to seeing you out there in the third race. Thank you very much. Cheers. Congratulations, two podiums in the two races this weekend, and uh, each time you're just making that step up. Yeah, it's a consistent pattern really, uh, so third to second and now hopefully the next race I'll take the uh, next step up onto the uh, top of the podium really, but uh, yeah, improving every time I'm out. Um, first race yesterday, got the third and just, just trying to keep it consistent, trying to keep on the black stuff, uh, just improving little bits here and there and just, just working really and just got to get it done. What can you do about Brian in front? Win. Overtake him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think if it dries out I'm going to have the edge on him because yesterday I set the past lap time in the dry. Um, so I'm hoping by the time we're out later on, it'll be bone dry and I can uh, try and uh, maybe see how far out we can get together and then uh, later on in the uh, race, see if there's any action going on. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to seeing you out there. Congratulations once again on your second place. Cheers. Thank you very much. Joe, third place. Interesting race out there, really, wasn't it? A lot of, uh, lot of fun going on in the, uh, in, in the conditions. Yeah, well, no, no one knew if it was dry, wet or anything because the outlap didn't really, because you're not at full pace, are you? Um, so we got to an alright start, 
Uh, we got into third, I think, and then by the time we got to the Angus Strait, um, we were back into fifth. <laughs> so we were like, shit. Um, so here we took Matt Pitchford round here because um, it was he we went on the dry line, so we locked straight up. Um, then from then it was just trying to maintain the gap from to fourth place because uh, Brian and is it James? James. James. Brian and James just uh, pulled off because we were battling, just about maintaining third place really. Cause we lost a toe, so yeah, happy with third. Much more you can do for the for the final race this afternoon. I'm hoping it absolutely lashes down to be honest with you. Um, so it makes it a bit more interesting. Um, but yeah, apart from that, hopefully try to get one one better second or maybe first and see what happens in the race. Well, I look forward to seeing you out there. Congratulations once again on your podium. Thank you very much. Cheers.